everybody in our world is very honest about like, we're all just kind of scared all the time. How much you're in the communication side or the PR side or the media relations side and the marketing side that kind of is different across the board. You never know what the next thing's gonna be. You never know what mistake is gonna be in an ad. There will be mistakes in ads. And so hearing that other people who were in big roles like that felt that way, that just made me feel even more so like, oh, I can do it because I'm scared too. Welcome back to How the Fuck Did You Get That Job? I have to say, I've said it before, but I pinch myself that I am in the Museum of Ice Cream recording a podcast with a curse word in it uh, that has to do about careers that is sponsored by a fortune cookie company. So uh, I'm stoked to be here. I know Nate is as well. And uh, before we get started, got to give a big shout out to Open Fortune. Open Fortune is providing colleges as well as brands like ZipRecruiter, Chime and Duolingo the ability to cut through the noise by flipping the fortune cookie on its head. You've had it, you've seen it, you've read it, you've probably related to it at some point by creating partnerships with 47,000 restaurants, big fortune cookie we like to call it, uh, as well as producers and distributors to get into all mom and pop Chinese restaurants around the whole entire country, uh, giving brands really just a choice, like a way to break through the noise of the clutter of 4,000, 5,000 ads people see a day. So shout out Open Fortune for renting out the Museum of Ice Cream and uh, have a Nate on the podcast today. Sweet. So without further ado, hey everybody, and welcome back to How the Fuck Did You Get That Job? The show where we explore the fascinating career journeys of remarkable individuals and where I, your host, eagerly delve into their stories. Today, we are joined by Nate Jorgensen, a master of marketing and communication in the academic world. Nate's journey began at Michigan State University, go Sparty, where he earned a BA in public relations followed by a master's degree in education from Defiance College. His career took off at Adrian College as a sports information director, a role he held for a year and a half. Then Nate made his mark at Miami University as an assistant media relations director. His path led him to the Traverse City Area Chamber of Commerce as communications coordinator and then to Wright State University as a web content specialist. Nate's flair for academia marketing blossomed at the University of Cincinnati College of Engineering, where he eventually became the director of marketing and, and communications. Now, he's channeling his expertise at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, as the senior director, director of academic marketing and communications. Nate, how the fuck did you get that job? <laughs> good, good question. Just hearing that is uh, interesting down, to down hear. Down memory road? Yeah. Memory lane. Uh, it, I started at Defiance College, uh, was, was before Adrian and working as the sports information director there. Sure. And that was my first like real job after college. To bring it back even further, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you were growing up, like what did, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be like the quarterback for the Lions, uh, Detroit Lions, or may, like if I had to, I would be a wide receiver, like cool. if, if I couldn't cut it as a quarterback um, or, or a basketball player. Cool. So it was athletics all yep. the way when somebody asked you. Yep. Great. Yep. So up through 17 years old, that was like, there was just no doubt. Was, like, was there a moment where you realized the dreams may not come true? Yes, there were many moments that I <laughs> realized it wasn't going to come true. Uh, but you don't realize that at 17, I guess. And uh, so I was just, you know, I, I come from an athletics obsessed family. Uh, my dad was a division one football player. My mom was a division one cheerleader. And so you're kind of expected to be <laughs> to be the next thing like that. And uh, but so I, I had fun playing sports in high school and then went to Michigan State University where obviously I'm not gonna um, just play uh, haphazardly at, yeah. at Michigan State. So, but I was actually a student manager for the football team while I was there. I, so I, if I wasn't gonna play, I wanted to work in athletics. And so I did that for four years uh, for Michigan State football. Nick Saban was there for two of my years. And, uh, and then graduated, did an inter internship with uh, Detroit Pistons in community relations, and then went into sports information uh, in higher education and started at Defiance College. And, and before we get into the higher education, the sports background, I have a sports background, Peyton, our videographer, has a sports background as well. Uh, take me through like 
what you learned just being in that and that role they probably worked you pretty hard if you're in sports uh and what did you take from that into college marketing oh it's a great question and i i think about it all the time and i'm i'm embarrassed to talk about it so i i appreciate you asking me the question because yeah. otherwise i'm just the old guy in the varsity jacket like talking yeah, about yeah. like what what happened in 1995. uh I think about freshman, high school freshman football all the time. It was probably the hardest thing that I ever got through. I was a really late bloomer. Uh, I grew like two inches in college. Yeah. Uh, so Nathan's I'm, sitting down, but he's really tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm six five now, but I was just not physically even competitive. And so to survive that, uh, not thrive, but just to survive it. When my wife and I had triplets, which was more challenging than anything uh, job related, I thought about freshman football all the time. I was like, I made it through freshman football. I can make it through this month of dealing with these screaming babies. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and then, you know, throughout Things got better. Uh, ended up having a lot of fun in uh, football and basketball uh, in high school, and was you know a, a, one of the main players on those teams. And we were not good, but uh, I'm so thankful for the opportunity, like that I had that experience. I'm thankful that I went to a small school where like you're not just uh, you know shouldered out of being able to play. Uh, from so much competition. Uh, and so being under pressure at that age uh, also, I think, really sets you up well for Absolutely. being under pressure later on in life. Yeah, yeah, sports can teach you a lot. What did you learn from the opportunity at, at Defiance working in sports as well as the Pistons? Yeah, well, starting with the Pistons, that was right after college. And I basically learned that I didn't want to work in community relations. Uh, so that was, you know, a it's lot important of intern- to know what you don't. Exactly. Do, yeah. A lot of internships are valuable in that way. And I remember just thinking like, I want to get my hands dirtier. Like I don't want to be just out at uh, promoting reading events, which are awesome. And and I love it. I'd probably be more into it now than I was then. So then uh, with my communications degree and public relations minor, uh, I thought that athletics communication would be a good mix of that, uh, that passion for athletics and then some of that know-how of uh, what I learned in, as an undergrad. And so at Defiance, I was a one-person shop as a sports information director for 20, yeah. 20 teams. I, I remember, like, that's the way it goes, right? Like, I remember Fairleigh Dickinson, they made the tournament, and it was like, head of sports marketing, and it was like a 18-year-old kid in a suit. At March Madness. You can end up in that position at the Division One level, uh, for sure. And uh, so it's a crazy world. Uh, I worked in it for five years. I uh, did work for three years at Defiance, met my wife there. Like, I just, I have such uh, a fond memory of Defiance uh, for so many reasons. And they're a school that's struggling with enrollment right now. I, I don't keep in touch with them a whole lot, but that's one of the things that motivates me in my job now is that like Defiance College, who no one knows, it's like, it's a really special place. It's the best educational experience I've had in my life. Where my- What separated it like from the others? It was, um, I was probably more mature than I, than I was in any other education setting. So some of that was maybe just me and the timing of that but learning about things that I was really interested in uh, and became more interested in. The master's was in education and I took the job just to do the job, but it happened to be a graduate assistantship. So it basically means you earn no money, but you can earn a master's if you want to. And I wanted to do it. So, um, and it's funny, like I just saw that as such a, oh, I should just do this while I'm here and that degree has paid off so huge based on what I ended up going into later that it's just one of those examples where you don't know what you don't know at that time. But to answer your question, I I learned a lot 
in the athletic department. We were a very tight unit uh, where all of us were just very personally connected. Yeah. And everybody at a small college like that is like somewhat a, a faculty member, also the, the head basketball coach and, and everything like that. So I was connected in many ways. And then uh, I just really liked the professors in, uh, in education as well. And just learned things about like the history of public education that I didn't know before that those were the type of things that ended up informing me later on. Like I had a decent uh, academic understanding of the landscape that I was entering into when I ended Very up getting into higher ed. Very cool. And did you see yourself when I, I guess you never really saw higher ed as a, as a career path, right? I saw higher ed at that time only as a connection to athletics. Sure. At that time, I was I was I was going to be the head sports information director at Notre Dame or Michigan State or uh, University of Florida or something like that. Like that was obviously what I was going to end up doing because I didn't become you know the 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 starting quarterback for the Lions. There's still time. Yeah, true. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's so, move on from yeah. you know sports. Like you held you know a plethora of roles that I just spoke about in the intro. I know it, we don't probably have enough time to hit every single one, right? But when did you realize that college marketing was something that not only you were interested in, but was there a moment you're like, I'm, I'm also good at this? It's a great question. Uh, and I'll stop saying that every time. Uh, I, I keep saying it. It's like, <laughs> you like that. <laughs> so I have to tell a bit of a story, unfortunately. To, so so we, have, we had triplet boys. We have triplet boys who were born 10 years ago. They were born at 25 weeks, so they were born very premature. To, to interrupt you, when that happened, because I know it's not about your job, but it obviously impacts everything in your life, right? Like, you weren't expecting triplets, right? Nope, nope. And uh, I was running my own business at the time. I was like a local person who could make you a, a WordPress website and get your business on Google, which was awesome. Uh, like it's relatively easy and p there's a lot of value in that. Anyway, so I, I was doing that and just kind of really comfortable in that. And then we found out triplets were, were on the way. So that stopped and uh, when they were born and they were born so prematurely, we basically quit everything we were doing we took out all of our retirement, which you're never supposed to do. We sold our house and moved into a rental and just stayed hunkered down sure. with the boys for an entire year and moved from Northern Michigan, Traverse City, to, uh, to be close to Cincinnati Children's Hospital where my boys are, are seen often. And uh, so that got me into this area. And then I was just applying everywhere. At, at one point, I was walking down the street, like dropping off my resume at places with the one pair of khaki pants that I had on and was like thinking like, OK, like truck driver school is probably the next. If not, nothing happens in the next month, I'm probably going to have to start looking at one of those type of roles. Then Wright State University responded to my resume uh, for a position. And I became a web content manager at Wright State in Dayton, Ohio. And that job was transformative because I was a person who went out and taught people how to use the website, the, the university website, how to update it and it was a new product. So it was one of those things where something different was happening at the university. And I many times was the person out in front dealing with the people who thought it was stupid and didn't know why we were doing it and hated it. Mm -hmm. And, and what year is this? Just yeah, it's uh, 2014 yeah. through 2016, 17. And so I, I really, took on more than I needed to there too, where like I started like groups of people who could meet and talk about how to do better things with the website. So like I was going outside of my job to make the whole system work better. So I didn't even really realize I was doing that at the time, but then looking back, it's like, that's not something that people normally do in, in a job like that. 
And I loved that job, loved Wright State. And then we got to a point where I needed to make more money to afford the mortgage that, that we had on a house now. So then, stuff. what's that? It's a real life stuff. That's right, yeah. So we had kind of adjusted based on everything that we had done. And then it was just like, you need to make more money. So then I looked and was very fortunate to get the web manager job for the University of Cincinnati's College of Engineering. And it was just kind of a random job post. I was probably kind of a random applicant, uh, got it. And that's when everything changed. Within three months, I went from like the fourth in command to the director. The director retired, the assistant director left with the dean who took, who took a job as a provost and, uh, and then they, they offered me the interim role as director. So I had no idea if I could do it and I just went into it full speed and uh, found out that I could do it. Yeah. it. It was that simple. And so for the first couple years, it was really just going through and kind of building a system that works but then COVID happened and a couple other things happened around that time where we like, we had some really good events that we put on that were super successful and made a difference for the college. And I was kind of like, holy crap, like something that I helped make happen really made a difference for the college. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't really know that to be true in other things that I did. And then with COVID communications, that was just such a trial by fire. Yeah, and I can then, imagine for yeah. everybody. Yep. With, uh, you know, you talk about going in that director role and like, you know, learning on the fly, not knowing if you could do it. Did you have any mentors along the way that uh, really helped you out? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, my, my boss at Wright State, uh, who is the director of marketing, still is Mark Anderson. He's been a good mentor of mine. And he helped me uh, bounce ideas off of him every once in a while. The University of Cincinnati was very decentralized in everything that they do. So you're kind of on your own. So I kind of talked to the other college marketing directors, the College of Business, the College of Education, and uh, off and on about different ideas that, that we had. But a lot of it was just kind of learning on my own. And that's kind of good in a way. Did you use the internet like YouTube University or like kind of just trial by fire? Uh, use the internet in what, in what way? To like teach yourself on any of this or? Of, yeah, and that was mostly early on in my career. Like when I was a one person sports information director, taught myself HTML, taught myself yeah. uh, all the Adobe products and everything like that. So that was something that plays into this too, because I had that wide skill set out of necessity from yeah. before that all of a sudden I could fill in for anybody on the team. And so that probably helped things go smoothly and make me look better as a director than maybe I was because it was actually just me filling in yeah. for some graphic design or something like that. Yeah. But it really was just a lot of just trial by fire and I just found out that I have the personality for it. Yeah. I, don't, I think that's something that people don't know until you end up in a manager or director position. Yeah. There's people who are really good technically and artistically and in a lot of other ways. But when you get into a role when you're leading people, are you a human being? And are you someone who can still get things done and make decisions when you don't have perfect information and you might get in trouble for it? Uh, I, I found, I have found with myself that I just accepted that reality very easily. And when I did that, that just kind of set me mentally on a path that took the pressure off, I guess. Totally. So take me back to COVID communications too, because I think, we're time for everybody. I started a podcast because COVID hit, otherwise I probably wouldn't be here right now. How did you use COVID, you know, and what, what were, you know, what was the inside scoop for you? And how did you talk to, you know, potential students, potential families, current families, right? Because this is an uncharted territory that, you know, most people haven't seen, eh, nobody's seen before. Yeah, the main thing for me was internal communications at the time. 
I would say uh, up until then, I was a little intimidated by the faculty where I kind of wanted to stay out of the way more than anything. And then all of a sudden on a Tuesday in March, it's like they need every piece of information yeah. they can get and that you're the person who's in charge of it. And we just so happened to be launching an intranet at the time. And the University of Cincinnati was doing it very carefully and then COVID hit and they just said, it's open, go use it. Like we're not telling, like you just, you need it. You need to update it and you need to use it. And so going through that and then just kind of realizing, oh, it's not that scary. Yep. And, uh, and that I can do it, uh, that I, can have difficult conversations. I can take being yelled at. I can also not be a pushover yeah. and uh, have a good relationship with the dean and keep a dean uh, informed on the different issues that are going on instead of just having surprises pop up and everything. So it was a lot of that and a lot of like running the virtual meetings. I'm just really big and it doesn't really ever have anything to do with my role. I'm really big on people within an, my organization that I'm in just understanding what people are saying. Yeah. And that is not a common thing that I think people pay attention to. And I think it causes a lot of problems. So having stuff like that where certain things had to be done to get classes online yeah. and uh, they had to be communicated clearly and concisely. Yeah. And then after a couple months, I kind of realized like, hey, I'm doing this. So then at the same time, it was uh, George Floyd happened right during that. And there was the huge racial awakening that was so needed, but it was also a very uh, challenging time to be a communications person for uh, any, any old, higher ed institution has a complicated history. Of course. <laughs> and you need to educate yourself on that. Absolutely. Right? And so I handled that in a way that I was proud of. Sure. And I was very involved in equity and inclusion while I was there. And so had the right people to talk to. Yeah. And then also, again, it was a lot of those times where it was we need this message from the dean by this time to because the university is using it for this thing and I haven't gotten approval from him mm -hmm. yet and I'm not gonna get uh, okay. approval from him and so I just have to send it. Yeah. And that's, when I work with people now, that's what I notice a lot of is people not willing to do that. Like paralysis by analysis. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and a lot of those you understand and you try to make those not happen. You know, I would be one to kind of make sure that I was available to that person maybe uh, in that kind of situation, but maybe it was just unavoidable at that time. But I think a lot of people want to advance and they want that job that they wonder how someone got it. And sometimes it's just guts. It's yeah. just doing it. And if you make a mistake, then you say that was a mistake yeah. and I'm sorry, here's, here's the reasoning. Totally. And uh, if, if that's not good enough, then that happens sometimes. Sometimes you're gonna get fired for reasons that aren't your fault. Absolutely. And that hasn't happened to me yet, but it probably will. Yeah. And but you got to be willing to take risks because, especially in academic marketing, because not a lot of people take big risks, right? It's uh, we're at the AMA of marketing. A lot of people doing the same, similar stuff. Um, I see it walking around the, the subways in New York City. I see the same CUNY ads, copy, copy, paste, copy, paste. But I'm curious, like moving on to your, your role now, like what made Miami University the right place for you? Um, and I have a bunch of questions about Miami, but go from there. Right after all of that with COVID and George Floyd, uh, so I started feeling like I could be a, a CMO. <laughs> that, that, that was the feeling that I started to have, like that's a possibility for me. So I reached out, and it was actually another podcast that I was listening to, The Higher Ed Marketer. And they had just started a podcast at the time, probably for the same reason. And they had interviewed three, their first three people they interviewed were Jamie Hunt, who was at Miami, uh, uh, Ohio at the time, Ethan Braden uh, yeah. at Purdue, and Jenny Petty at Montana. 
who are like three of the biggest people in our uh, orbit. And so I listened to Jamie and I was just like, I love everything that she has to say. And she was very, she's very much like leading with empathy and uh, everything is personal and we're not gonna be ruthless in what we're doing. And uh, so I, I contacted her after she was on the podcast and just said, I would love your advice. I'm just an aspiring something. I want, I want to get somewhere. Uh, maybe to a CMO. And it's amazing in our community. Like the next day I was on the phone with her. She was like, cool. yeah, she's like tomorrow, one o'clock, I have an yeah. hour. I've noticed that people in higher ed are more reachable, you know, Absolutely. than the CMO of Pepsi or whatever it may yeah. be, right? And her and I just really kind of hit it off and have a lot of the same, like the same sense of humor and, and stuff. So, and a year and a half later, my current job came open at Miami and she contacted me just to tell me to apply. Yeah. She didn't uh, say, hey, here's a job for you. And it, it was a, a, a big step up for me because uh, I would, I'm, would be in charge of the people that I was doing the job currently. And, uh, but went through the interview process and was fortunate enough to get that job. I'm a big presenter. If anyone's up for a job with me, they will not out present me. If, if a presentation is a part of it, like I will just find things to blow people away. I might not have much more under the surface. Like the hiring committee doesn't know after that point, but they know that this person came in and blew us away. Sure, with, sure, sure, and gave them a great experience. Exactly, and just said things that we weren't expecting and mm. all, all of those things. So. That's another thing too, that I think a lot of people don't take job interviews seriously enough. They, they think of it as something like, oh, I gotta get my resume printed out by Tuesday so that I can take it to the interview. And I, I worked on my presentation for a month before my interview there. And uh, so they said later, that was a huge reason. Uh, and her husband, Dave Hunt, who's also in higher ed marketing said that that's the best I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, luck is hard work meets opportunity. Yeah, and so that's something that I try to do and that, that's what led me to that position. But I also reached out to Ethan yeah. at Purdue and yeah. Jenny, uh, yeah, and Jenny, a uh, uh, previous guest. Yeah. and uh, Jenny Petty at Montana and everyone was just so helpful yeah. and real about things and everybody in our world too is very honest about like we're all just kind of scared yeah. <laughs> all the time <laughs> whether you're in the how much you're in the communication side or the PR side or the media relations side and the marketing side it, that kind of is different across the board you never know what the next thing's going to be yeah. You never know what mistake is going to be in an ad. There will be mistakes yeah. in ads. And so hearing that other people who were in big roles like that felt that way, that just made me feel more, even more so like, oh, I, I can do it because I'm scared too. Yeah. So. <laughs> S silly question, but I have to ask because I remember being a prospective student and I remember going to a Miami University, like kind of like information, like it, I never toured the campus, even though I've heard it's amazing. And I, I just remember like my dad was like, oh, I thought this was the one in, you know, Miami, Florida. Like, uh, does that come up and how do you combat that? It does. We just had a really successful uh, TikTok video that we had nothing to do with, but a student put out a video uh, saying that she applied to Miami University thinking it was the University of Miami and she's at our school now so good. and she loves it yeah and it's the uh, best PR that you can get yeah, right? yeah but it was so it was really funny and stuff like that does happen and there are opportunities it is also a huge challenge where I've seen ads that we've done digitally uh, or on social media where every comment below it is a political comment about Florida. Yeah. I would, you know, something about sending a student to a school in Florida. Why would I send a student? I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but that's, and that's like, 
they're not it's even just not us at all. Right, they, and they're not, not even really understanding good. who we are in the yeah. ad, and uh, they could at least be criticizing us yeah, yeah, yeah. for something that was real. So that is a barrier to overcome. It also is an opportunity, like yeah, they yeah. all are, where we've done some kind of fun stuff before, where we put out like beach themed sure. uh, content, and then uh, may do it in a fun fun way, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that that is a thing where we are kind of alone in yeah. that. There's there's a couple places like like Old Dominion or uh, uh, James Madison or uh, uh, other places that you're like, where is that and yeah, yeah, and yeah. what is it? And so uh, we do talk to schools yeah. in that same situation sometimes yeah. where they uh, have to tell people. Who they are and where they are before they even yeah. start with it's beginning what's of education about the education. That's right. Uh, with you know, what are you most proud of uh, at Miami University and what you guys are doing over there? Uh, I'm very proud of where we've come with our centralization of marketing efforts. Uh, so we've grown a team, grown to a team of about seventy some, which is really big, and we're very fortunate to have that support. Uh, at an institution our size, but my job is working with the colleges uh, and the, reg the regionals. And as the team centrally was being built up and is still being built up to have a full graphic design team, to have a full website team, uh, ad buying and everything, the colleges who lost basically all of their autonomy and all of their people had to be brought in. And so I was thrown into that willingly. I took, I took the job knowing that's what it was. And it's been really hard every step of the way. And it's been hostile at, at times and it's been uh, everything you can imagine. But just recently, we've been getting to a point where I think we've found a really good balance of what we can do centrally with the directors of marketing in each of those colleges that allows them to make a difference in recruiting yeah. students while still reasonably being able to get done all of those other things they have to do in that role. Because you have to make PowerPoint presentations in that role. We don't love that that's the fact, but... It's just the name of the game. Yeah, and I'm not going to fight that battle right now. Uh, uh, we can work on that down the road. So the fact that we've gotten to where we are, to where we're a productive team, doing interesting work that I'm excited to see where it goes, uh, I'm just extremely yeah. proud that, I, you know, going back to that freshman football thing, yeah, yeah. it's like at times it was like, you just have to get up and go to that next two a day. And uh, go get it. Yep. If you, if you make it through, then you're on to the next one. And that's where that kind of uh, experience helped. And when you get out the other side, that's when that's really rewarding. Totally. So we talked a lot about your career. I want to talk a little bit more about your personal life too, before we end with a quick question round. So. I mean, what hobbies do you have, right? Do you, are you big into video games, antique cars, like anything fun? Not really. I, uh, mostly a dad, uh, like that's pretty much all of my time. So again, a triplet boys, uh, one who's autistic, uh, pretty much nonverbal. So that's kind of a, 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 a job in itself. Sure. Um, getting him to his schools and uh, different programs and stuff like that. And then our other two who are uh, their own people and, and getting them to where they need to be and just spending good time with them. We try to have like reading time at night with them. We haven't been great about that recently, but just being all together reading books uh, instead of them playing video games and stuff sure. like that. But I've become like a halfway competent home improvement person. There you go. Yeah. I'm working on that too. Yeah. And it really, it was a COVID thing. Too, yeah. Yeah. Where, you're just like, I need to make my space yeah. a good space. And you got your stimulus check and you're yeah. like, I'm going to do something yeah. inside my house. So I, I, I put up a, a new ceiling in our old house and just kind of building, started building from there. So I look for projects to do. And I guess that's kind of a bit of my escape from 
you know, the job's stressful and being a parent is stressful. And so if I can go out and say, I'm going to build this thing for the boys to use, um, that's my time out in the garage to, to have fun. Well, that's awesome. And it sounds like you're an awesome dad and <laughs> uh, an awesome marketer and a great presenter too. So thank you. We're, yeah. We're, yeah, self, uh, yeah. Self-described yeah. awesome Absolutely. presenter. Sweet. So we're answer the enter the quick question round real quick and uh, get and you know keep this episode rolling. So before we get into the quick question round, I got to give a shout out to Open Fortune. Open Fortune is one of the world's most creative ad canvases, breaking through the clutter. Uh, working with companies like ZipRecruiter, Chime, Duolingo, Illinois State, Northern Arizona, and putting millions and millions of fortune cookies into Chinese restaurants, reaching 99% of zip codes in those mom and pops and providing just a magical opportunity for brands to reach their consumers uh, at the dinner, ta dinner table when families are around and our decisions are made. So without further ado, let's open up one of these bad boys and see if it had something to do with our conversation. Are you a fortune cookie lover? Do you like opening them? Uh, I do, now that I'm doing it. I don't do it very often. I'm not a huge connoisseur of Chinese food. Yeah, I just grew up in a small town. There you so, go. Yeah. Sweet. So what does yours say? You must do something important before midnight. I love that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think that's going to be true today. And who, who you got on the back? It is Duolingo. Duolingo. Mine is show them what you got. It's pretty amazing. I'll show them staples. So. I hope I showed you I'm a decent podcast. Good copy, podcast. Staples. Yeah. Yeah. Good copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, actually Nicole in the other room for writing that copy, but um, sweet. Person you'd most want to sit down to dinner with, dead or alive? Frederick Douglass. Favorite city in the world? San Francisco. Is it okay to sleep with socks on? No. Damn. Favorite rom-com? 10 Things I Hate About You. It's a good one. Uh, favorite Defiance University grad? Defiance College. Defiance College, sorry. My wife. There you go. Uh, favorite Michigan State grad? It's lightning round. Um, Draymond Green. There you go. In 40 years, what will people be nostalgic for? Driving cars. Yeah, I think sooner than 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it'll be no nostalgic no for Oh yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right, nostalgic. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, the worst advice you've ever been given? Keep your head down, your mouth shut, and do your job, and good things will happen. It's not true. Terrible advice. Uh, in one sentence, how would you sum up the internet? Research. And who's somebody you think should hop on this podcast? You gave a couple already, actually. Yeah, Jamie Hunt. Jamie Hunt. Last question. One thing people don't understand about college marketing is? How challenging it is to do good marketing with all of the checks and balances that there are. And in 10 years, where can we catch you? What are you, be, what are you gonna be doing? From a career side and personally? Personally, I'll be working out in my garage, building something, and uh, hopefully I'll be a CMO at a university. Great. Well, I can't wait to check in in 10 years, hopefully sooner. But that was awesome, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Sweet.